Okay, so we're working with Simon today on his, on his development of the Richard II speech from Act 5, Scene 4. Thank you. Um, and basically what we're doing here is we're just giving, I've given them an exercise which was very, very related, uh, like we did in the first exercise, when we were moving, uh, first week, sorry, when we were moving from chair to chair to chair. Net, then I got him up on this table and I got him to start working different angles, different thoughts, using verse line. And one of the things I'm really learning here is that by simply trusting the verse line and pointing it to different, pointing it in different, uh, using it at different points of focus, like um, addressing different people for, per se, he's getting much, much clearer. But it's just about establishing what is a verse line and what is, um, what is the actor's natural tendency to break line. So, start from the beginning then. I have been studying how I may compare this prison where I live unto the world, and for because the world is populous, and he is not a creature but myself, I cannot do it. Yet I'll hammer it out. My brain, I proved a female to my soul, my soul the father, and these do we get, a generation of still breeding thoughts. And these same thoughts people this little world, in humours like the people of this world, for no thought is contented, the better so. As thoughts of things divine are intermixed with scruples, and do set the word itself against the word, as thus come, little ones. And then again it is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. Can we need to pause? Because the verse line is very specific here. So when you're saying, um, so you actually nailed the better sort, mm. but when you start to run it off on a little bit, the better sort, as thoughts of things divine, are intermixed with scruples. And you set the word itself against the word. Yep, absolutely yep. right. And then, as thus come little ones. And then again, oh, it is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the costume of a small needle's eye. Do you even hear what happened? The, he, he, just, he just gets the thought. He, he thinks just, it. Yeah. He thinks it. That's oh my god. This is why I say to you, Shakespeare is brilliant at teaching you how to think. Yeah. Because when you understand from the verse line that he's asking you to think in a certain way, it teaches you how to act. Yeah. 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 So. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Right. <laughs> so, so, so when we're looking here, the better sort as thoughts of things divine are intermixed with scruples. And to set the word itself against the word as thus. Come, little ones. And then again, it is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. So just be very careful on, on, on as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. You can be, still be finding, finding that thought, oh, mid thought. Yeah? yeah? Uh, okay, so we're good with that? Yeah. Right. Try that bit uh, from the better sort. And be very mindful still, what are your final words on your verse line so you follow your verse line? You don't have to speak it like it's poetry, but you do have to speak it like it's a verse line because the thought is fed through each verse line. Cool? The better sword, as thoughts of things divine are intermixed with scruples and to set the word itself against the word. As thus come, little ones, and then again, it is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. It feels so different. Why? And What's different? Because the word, I wouldn't necessarily stress it the what, way I... What, what, what word are you stressing? On, on, on the end, camel. Yeah. Um, and by stressing it, you have actually the, a, a very vivid image of a camel and it makes it really ridiculous as well. It makes it like, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it helps you. Yeah, I've, I've never felt it like that before. It's, it's really on the spot now. Okay, right, <laughs> on the spot. Yeah. So you're actually thinking on, in the moment. Yeah. Right, on the word. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's where what's beautiful about it is because you need to be in that present moment rather than thinking, oh, I've got next thought to say. Mm -hmm. No, use your verse line because your verse lines are thoughts coming to you. Yeah. Yeah? They may come a little bit faster, they may come a little bit more slower, a little bit more, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about that.
But essentially, what's actually happening is each li each line is a continuation of that thought, and it's a development of that thought, and you're finding that thought. Yeah, and, and, and exactly what you were saying. That that's what making what's making it ridiculous. You've got the camera in the head, and then fight, like you've got the next line, and it's informing almost the next one, saying, "Yeah, it's it's actually finding the, the <laughs> yeah yeah the post and instead yeah well the yeah the meters are perfect. It's oh all right. Yeah. So very very quickly, shall we just go through the next, the next one? one yeah. So what are the key words that we've got to look here? Oh. Nails, ribs, walls, pride. Okay, can you just read it? Thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot, unlikely wonders. So think, they do plot. They do plot. What? Unlikely, unlikely wonders. wonders. Yeah. How these vain weak nails, nails may tear passage with a flinty of ribs. This hard world, my ragged prison walls. And for they cannot die in their own pride. And, and for they cannot. Cannot. So you, it's, it's, oh, it's because, a different thought. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's a parenthesis. Mm. Yeah, and for they cannot, slight pause, die in their own pride. Yeah, so don't forget you've got your caesural pauses here. We've mm. spoken about caesural pauses, haven't we? Mm. No? Okay. Caesural pauses are basically a pause within the line, mm -hmm. which is a natural sense pause. Sis Berry talks about it all the time. So, thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot unlikely wonders. Oh, how these vain, weak nails may tear a passage through the flinty ribs of this hard world, my ragged prison walls, and for they cannot die in their own pride. I mean, it's a minuscule pause, yeah. tiny, but what it actually allows, and this is what I was saying to you last night, John, is that it allows you the opportunity to let the audience soak in information. The listeners go, okay, this is not just a whole load of stuff right now. Yeah? Do you want to give it a try? I do. What are the last words again? Uh, plot. plot, nails, ribs, walls, pride. Don't worry, I'll be, gi I'll be giving you the... <laughs> yeah. Thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot unlikely wonders how these vain, weak nails may tear a passage to the flinty ribs of this hard world. My ragged prison walls, and for they cannot die, no one pride. Okay, so... I did the pause completely. <laughs> This is, this is rehearsal. <laughs> this is not performance. Yes, yeah, so let's be very, very clear on that. You are allowed to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, how the hell are you supposed to learn? Yes? <laughs> Never give a mistake a bad name if you, if you learn from it. Okay? Unless you really show it. Right, okay. Um, so, it's, it's just you've got to watch what words you're stressing. So, this is where you need to go through your iambic pentameter and really look at what is the most important word in the line, in each line. Thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot unlikely wonders. How these vain, weak nails may tear a passage 